Good morning everybody, or Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today we're going to talk about my favorite Final Fantasy VII character so far, or at least the one that I've had the most fun using, and that's the flower girl of Midgar herself, Aerith. Now, she's a little bit more confusing than some of the other units, so a lot of this video is going to focus on her AI, tuning her to do what you want her to do, so you can see the kind of results that I've seen from her, and hopefully, if you have her, have as much fun as you can. Let's go. All right, now this video is mostly going to focus on her AI, but I do want to mention vision cards, espers, and gear real quick. Now, when you're talking about vision cards and espers specifically, I could sit here and break down like which vision cards are good for mages and Aerith, but you know what vision cards and espers you have more than I know what vision cards and espers you have. So let me just tell you how to think about it with her a little bit. Obviously, you're going to want magic, HP, and agility. I think those are the three stats that I look for the most, so I really like Bahamut and Siren on my Aerith. Now to take that one level higher, I like Bahamut because he boosts her human killer, her uh, magic damage um, and magic up, and has magic resist on his board. So if I'm running Aerith in an anti-magic group, I like to throw Bahamut on her if I can. Siren, the other Esper I shouted out here, has water attack on it, has the good stat block that we mentioned just a second ago, and has a lot of slash resistance on it. So if I'm building Aerith as someone who I want like getting in there close, might have to deal with like King Mott or Rain, I kind of like slash resistance in that guild, in that guild, in that group. And so I really like Siren, but you know what Espers you have, so use the one that you think fits her the best. Now, vision cards. There's always the generic like Trousseau and Ramu to boost magic attack and magic up, but I think there's some special shout outs that I want to do for Aerith. I'll start with Siren. If you're running a mono water team and hunting fire teams, Siren is as good as it gets, you guys. Like water attack up, every water unit's going to love that. And fire resistance 20 for your whole water team, like more or Aerith or Titus with this card in the right build can just go not care about fire units. So I really like Siren. And then the stat line is really good for mages. So this is a great card for Aerith. I also want to shout out Black Rose of the Battlefield. Any mage that's like a playing a support role in your group and you will need more agility, you can toss this on him. It'll be fine. Um, and then I want to shout out Solidus, a card we can all go get right now from the Mog Shop if you need it. Uh, at max level, this will give slash resistance 20 to your group. If you're running her with light element units, it will give them HP up and the stat line is good. Plus magic attack up for the bestowed effect. Really good card on Aerith. Uh, for the build that you're going to see here a lot, I'm running Siren Siren. I mix it up all the time. Now gear, I'm going to focus on why the guard stick is so good for Aerith. Um, one thing you'll notice about her if you're using her is she tends to be in the fight. Like, yes, you can build her to stay back, but that's a two-edged sword because sometimes she stays so far back that the fight happens without her. So why is guard stick so good for her? Because it has magic resist up on it. Because this stick gives her magic resist, it opens up her other two slots to worry about other things. For the build you see on the screen right here, I'm using the Galmea Coat to get magic up and spirit. I could instead be using something like the Mage's Habit for slash resistance and defense, or I could use, um, if we click on this, I could use accessories like the Water Ring, you know, I could use the Pod, like... I don't have to worry about magic resist on my gear anymore. It gives me more building options. And so I really think the guard stick is a very important item for Aerith. And then TMRs. Now, TMRs, we're going to talk more about this when we talk about her AI. Because she has this healer AI. Um, in this build right here, I'm just using this for agility. And I have the activation turned off. But her AI does like to use TMRs. We'll talk about that more in a minute when we get to fights and um, AI right now. All right, so we got a battle. This is on the current Guild Wars map. This is Guild Wars practice, and we're going to watch Aerith in action, then break down why she does what she does and talk about alternatives. So notice turn one, she runs to Ramada and casts 
her magic shield on her and Ramada. We are fighting a mono fire team. They have lots of magic. This is a really good skill and a skill Aerith's AI really, really likes to use. Ramada is now going to be very effective against mages, something she already is. And then we know that more is going to be fine over there against two fire mages. Like, let's be real. More is good to go. So, Aerith's second turn. She walks up and uses a TMR buff. She uses the spirit buff and note that that gave Berserk Resist. Special shout out to the, the starry necklace. What, what is it called being the, the necklace TMR? I'll put a graphic on the screen. It's a great TMR for Aerith because it gives a spirit buff, which her AI likes to use. And if you're running against fire teams in King Mont, it's really effective at preventing him from berserking your team. Okay, now with, with Mont in range and nobody low HP, Aerith is gonna look for some damage. She's gonna look to use her laser beam. Mont says, oh, I'm gonna make you berserk. And Aerith's like, no, you're not, cause I prevented it with a buff. She's fine. And then she beams him with Ray of the Ancients for 4,600 damage and drain some of his AP. Okay, Moore is over here 2v1ing because, like, that's what Moore does. She literally just handled, like, two, uh, two fire units, no problem. Ramada gonna kill King Mont, and we win the fight. Now, let's talk about the brain of the flower girl herself, and I'm gonna put a flow chart on the screen. So, looking at this flow chart, here is, like, how her AI functions most of the time. So, is there someone in range I'm able to heal? Her AI, if you have any sort of heals turned on, or if you have a TMR that heals, will say, is there a low HP enemy, like, or low HP ally, somebody below, like, 50% or whatever that trigger number is? If yes, she'll go heal them if she's in range, and then next turn you start the flow chart over. If no, she'll think, am I in range to do damage to an enemy um, if I have any of my attack skills turned on, or I could just go auto attack them? If yes, she will go do damage to that enemy. If no, she will go to her buffs. Now, that's pretty easy to understand, but that last little square, the buffing square, takes a little bit more digging into because that's where you really get into fine-tuning her AI to do, to, to, to uh, about said something weird, to make her do what you want her to do. And to discuss that a little bit more, I'm going to throw another graphic on the screen and talk about how Aerith is a real friend. Um, that's like how I think of her. Like, she's like the best friend of your group, especially if you have the skill Protective Familiar turned on. She loves to cast this buff. Notice that it's like got that small square-based AoE, which brings her to an ally, so she'll cast this on them. Now, real quick, if you notice on the screen, I have a team comp up, right? It's the same one you've looked at before. Let me briefly explain how buffing priority works. Slot one is more. She has the most priority for getting buffs. Slot one has more I need to get buff priority than slot two, and slot two has more than three. Right? So that's how it works. Now, that can be overridden if somebody like a tank has hate, then the AI will go to your person with hate and buff them first. But in this scenario you see on the screen right here, there's no turn one hate, so we don't have to worry about that. If possible, Aerith would run to more and cast Protective Familiar on her first turn. Now, if she's not in range of more, the AI will think, can I make it to Titus? I wanna go buff one of my friends. If not, then no, she will buff herself and either move forward or stand still, depending on like what sub job you have picked or the map or a whole lot of different factors. But remember that, if you have Protective Familiar turned on, Aerith's first priority is gonna be to go buff one of her friends with it. And the AI prioritizes either the unit with hate or the unit in slot one, or the unit, you know, ahead of them in the slots. To show you exactly what I mean, this fight just started, and notice the very first thing Aerith did was run to somebody at a higher priority than her and buff them with her shield. Now, if Moore had not run off by herself, Aerith would have next looked to go buff Moore, but because Moore left, Aerith will keep prioritizing slot two, and when it's her turn again, because she has a TMR equipped with a buff on it, she will now go run to Ramada again and buff her once again. That's what I was just talking about. 
Now, you lucky dogs, I have another beautiful picture for you to look at. And this one shows you the buffing priority of Aerith, like which buff she will use first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. And keep in mind, in most fights, you really only get enough turns buffing to do about two, maybe three buffs if you're lucky, and sometimes only one. So, look at the graphic here. As sub time mage, Aerith, like we've said, will prioritize protective familiar first, and then her TMR buff second. Now, that's if you're running a TMR like Starry Veil vale, that is a buff. If it's something like Eunice TMR that is a heal, the AI will treat that as a heal. And so think back to that first flow chart. She'll use it if it's going to be the most effective heal when she needs to heal. Okay. Uh, what about Haste and Quicken? Those on Time Sub Mage Aerith, Time Mage Sub Aerith, are bumped down to third and fourth on the priority list. Which means on most maps, if you leave her main job buffs on, she might not cast a bunch of Haste and Quicken. You might need to turn off those higher priority buffs to get her to use Haste, to get her to use Quicken. You can see the priority list. That also means that Re-Raise in her main job is like fifth on the priority list. You guys, there's no way a regular arena fight or a regular Guild Wars fight, you're gonna have enough turns buffing the Aerith is even going to bother casting Re-Raise. Like, she's always going to have somebody she can haste. She's always going to have somebody she can quicken. So you'll need to turn those off if you want her casting Re-Raise. And then you get to just do this for me, okay? Her really good self-buff that lowers her hate and increases her AoE resistance. And then you get to refocus, which is an AP restore buff. Like, the AI ain't ever using that. Like, look how far down the priority list those last two buffs are. So if you're making a build, which there are really good builds out there for a lot of those lower priority buffs, you need to not be on sub time mage or to turn off certain higher priority skills. Okay, let's go to another fight and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now this Aerith build that you're about to see is my current favorite Aerith build. It is sub ruin knight Aerith with a lot of those high priority skills that we saw in the last flow chart turned off. So, Aerith moves forward. Sub Ruin Knight for me allows her to move forward sometimes. Like, maybe that'll be different on some maps, but on this one, that's how it works. And then check this out. She's casting re-raise on herself. The, the priority one for that re-raise would have been more, but Aerith couldn't get in range of more to use it on her, and so she's in slot two. That's priority two. She'll cast it on herself. Then, she uses her hate down and AoE resist buff on herself and keeps moving forward. At this point, she's ready to rock. She's ready to get in there and mix it up with the enemy team or heal if people are low. More and Titus taking care of themselves with some buffs. That's awesome. And we're running very, very heavy damage vision cards and espers in this group. Titus just slapped King Mont, but Mont is going to counter with his limit break. I have no uh, Berserk resistance in this build because I have that turned off from Aerith. So Mont lands the Berserk. I guess that's a drawback. Although King Mont being next to Berserk Titus is no picnic for King Mont. More one shots those two mages because you know, like who cares about them? And Aerith is now in range to do damage. No one's low HP. So here comes Ray of the Ancients and Mont gets dropped. If we throw that original flow chart on the screen real quick here, you'll see how that played out. Like, uh, priority two, priority one for Aerith is always heal. Had Titus been too low on HP, she would have healed him instead of killing King Mott. He wasn't, so she laser beamed King Mott for like 55,000 some damage. Won the fight, GG. So let me throw one more uh, flow chart on the screen for you here, and that's going to be her sub Ruin Knight flow chart. You can see in that last fight that you just watched, I had Protective Familiar and I had her TMR both turned off. So she used re-raise and just do this for me, okay? Uh, first, I think th with those two skills like on, that makes her kind of a damage. Like a, she can get in there and mix it up, is what I'm saying. And she does a lot of damage, you guys. In my Guild Wars today, um, she hit a King Mot for 10,000 damage, and that's not some scrub King Mot. Like I think we're currently rank 18 or something in Guild Wars. So she ran up to somebody's King Mot on defense and literally chopped him in half with her laser using this build running siren so, like it's good it can work uh you just need her to do those buffs and move forward and the thing i found with the ruin knight sub job is it keeps her from just hanging back like had she been on i want to point this out had she been on 
her Time Mage subjob, and I would have turned off Protective Familiar and Starry Veil. There's a chance that she would have just stood where she stands to start the fight, cast Re-Raise on herself, stood there, cast Just Do This For Me Okay, stood there, and just chilled. The Ruin Knight subjob has made her more aggressive for me. Now, I have not used her on all maps yet, I have not bought her into all team comps yet, but that's a cool little tip I would give somebody for at least our current Guild Wars map, is on sub Ruin Knight, she tends to, you know, move a little bit more forward. If you want her to move forward with her Time Mage sub on, Protective Familiar, really good for that. Keep her in range to follow somebody else, give them haste, give them quicken, that will keep her up with the fight, draw her in close enough to be a good healer and a good damage dealer. Okay, and now we're about to the end of this Aerith video. I think my biggest tip, like if I wanted to end this with just one tip, it would be to use Aerith effectively, you need to set her AI up to move appropriately with your team. You never want to have a support unit that just stands in the back while the rest of the fight is a two versus three in the enemy team's favor and then dies by herself. So use Protective Familiar, make use of Haste and Quicken, like think of those flow charts that I showed you and set your Aerith up so she follows your team in uh, either as close or far back as you need her to. Doing test fights with Aerith is really important. She's not just a brain dead sort of unit like Yuna kind of is, who just space chickens and heals and all that, you know, uh, reaction ability, all that stuff. Yuna, like freaking Yuna. Anyway, um, I hope this video was helpful for some people. I hope it uh, showed you at least how I've been using Aerith and maybe you can emulate that or maybe you have better ideas and you can leave those in chat or stop by the discord and show them off. I love watching your guys' videos. I really do. So have a good one, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Peace.